Hi, I'm Dana Durfer from nuclearproctologist.org. A couple of days ago on the 19th of September, and the day's the 21st of 2014, I had an interview with the director of Bamfield Marine Research Center. Now, that was the director. He's the top of it. And he, he made some pretty amazing statements, so it took a couple of days for me to get to supporting evidence in order for everybody to be able to comprehend what I'm talking about in context. And I'll just pop over and I'll give you a quick idea as you're watching the video so you can be able to, when you're looking at the pictures, you'll know what I'm talking about. So Berkeley Sound has an um, amazing amount of dives going on and people going out and taking pictures over the years. And so we have a lot of documentation of white sea anemones on rocks. And they normally cover all the rocks, every inch of it, you can have up to 500 in a square meter. And these creatures will clone themselves. So if you take a piece off it, it'll fall and clone. And this Eco Jones, he's got a lot of pictures of Berkeley Sounds, what you're looking at. All the pictures are Bach, Berkeley Sound, all the stories I'm going to show you today, why the interview in a couple of moments is coming up here. But I wanted to give you context. And there's so many people out there went into Berkeley Sound and have pictures. This is a rather amazing statement that we got today. These are all Berkeley Sound. And as you can see, the sea anemones are, everybody gets pictures of them. John Rawlings. I mean, these are, this is what it looks like to me every day for 14 years diving on the coastline. Now, according to Berkeley Sounds Marine Research in Banfield, the sea anemones don't attach to rocks here. And uh, I just showed you the pictures and the rest are coming. Please watch the entire interview so you can get the context of how many times he repeated himself on that issue and the statements he made. He did not offer me any documentation on why they don't grow on rocks in Berkeley Sound. He makes it into a statement, but the dive shops and the photographers over the years, including National Geographic, have taken pictures of them on the sea rocks. Uh, they've been there for 40 years and they said they've never seen one. So here's the interview. It's very perplexing that he said that to me. I did give him context. This is about Fukushima and who I am right away. And he went down that path. And so I need to come out and try to have a debate. He doesn't want to. All right, folks. We'll catch you next time. Here we go. Hello, sir. Hi there. I'm Brad Anholt. I'm the director. How are oh, you're the director. Good yes. stuff. Can I get a few moments of your official time, maybe? Yeah, sure. Do you want to come in and sit down? Can I? Oh, that would be so grateful. My name is Dana Durford. I'm also known as nuclearproctologist.org. And so what I'm doing is a survey up this coastline. I've yeah. covered around 500 kilometers. And I understand the nuclear industry so well because of Fukushima. We're looking at the tidal pools in the nursery of the actual ocean. And so I don't find the white sea anemones anywhere I went, and including the, the launch docks. And I was wondering if you guys have any yeah, kind of... There, in, there's tons of them right off our dock. On, on, the our wharf, dock. on the wharf, not on the rocks though. Right, so so these would normally cover every single rock and every shoreline, the uh, entire no, coastline. No, that, it is? No, it isn't, because that's not what we found here over the last 40 years. Well, that's what I... We documented that for 14 years as commercial divers, the entire well, fleet. Um, so got, you're saying it doesn't... We've got samples here from the last 40 years, from right, classes should... that have been done and researchers. No, and no, I, I take your word for it. Yeah, no, I take your word for it. <clears throat> I was just wondering, because I don't see them on the rocks, I only see them on the wood, and that's not what I'm used to seeing for six hours a day, 315 days a year, and mm -hmm. I'm really perplexed. Now, well, it's not it's just what, here, it's the... In, it's what all we're the way. used to seeing. Yeah, well, it's, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's not indigenous, that's normal to me. I don't see any periwinkles. I didn't see any snails. No periwinkles? I'm not seeing, well, we've seen only the green sea anemones out here, just a lot of but them. But periwinkles? we got lots of them. Yeah, well, maybe you can, is there a chance you can tell me where to and we'll go find them? So, which species are we talking about? We're talking about the 5,600 that are recognized for here of the marine, like the 600 algae to 770 Sorry, sea anemones. periwinkles. Now, the periwinkles in particular, I think there's five of them, is it, or six yeah. of them? And I know Berkeley Sound had an extra 1,800 more species than Georgia Strait did of different species that are indigenous to the coastline. Now we didn't, we, like normally as a diver I find every rock is covered in snails and that every rock is either covered in limpets and that every rock that is not covered in that is covered in white sea anemones and that we never even found them on the ferry terminals. Or uh, you know, we're not seeing any major changes. The only major change we've seen has been the loss of uh, the three 
uh, sea stars due to this wasting disease. Right, there's 70 species of sea star on this coastline. They're indigenous to each area, and you won't find them in the other parts of the Pacific Rim. And we found five species in 500 kilometers. We didn't. We found mostly purple, and we did find the reds. We did find orange. We found wasting. So, and now, when you talk, are you talking about Chrysaster of Cratius that comes in the different colors? Because those are all the same species. Right, but you you have 70 species that are recognized for the coastline. We've only identified five colors. Let's put it that way. Is a better way, maybe. Well, that's not the way to. Not identify now. We them. we haven't fit. Sorry. So that's not the way to identify them. Okay. So the brown, purple, red, and orange. We never found no ones, brown. Yeah. The ones with the, I mean, that's Pizasterocratius that comes in uh, those color morphs. Right. Brown and purple, we're not sure, are actually different. Okay. Um, so those are all the same species. You cross those, you get any variety of the colors. And we, ne we never found, in, now so, out here we still only found one patch of sea urchins, red urchins. And I'm sure there's more out there. If you find one, there has to be more out there, but it's not. So normally I used to pick 20,000 of these things a day, every day, so commercially. Red urchins? Red urchins. Uh, well, we know that and that's, that's around 5,000 pounds. Yeah, we know that, that, in fact, that they've been over-harvested. So well, actually, you can't over-harvest them because the divers can only work about 2% of the entire coastline. I know they can be over-harvested because... Well, I surveyed it off the side of the boat for 14 years. I'm actually an expert in that one. The reason why you can over-harvest them is that a large urchin is, a, is over 100 years old. Right, and on the East Coast, what happens is the ice comes in and crushes everything on the shoreline. And then in the springtime, it fills up with these baby green urchins. Now, in BC, you don't have the ice come along the coastline crushing everything. And so the big ones will take up all the shallow water, the, the pristine, the first 30 feet yeah. of water, as much as you can. But this is something I'm intimately lived with 315 days a year, every year. And have you been to the sea urchin barrens that are on the coast of Pachino? I've actually been on about 4,000 of these islands in the, up north. And so, I, like I said, once again, I ran the biggest operations out there. I was just trying to figure it out because we can't find it. And I figure maybe you guys might be able to give me some insight. Well, there are sea urchins here, lots right. of them. We have people doing work on them. Right. Uh, they green, are, but green, they're not. Purple and red. Well, we use underwater well cameras, and we don't find them like they're saying. What we're finding was just very sporadic. Was right here. We didn't find them anywhere from here to Desolation Sound. I kid you not. I'm not kidding you. Well, I mean, I I could send you to the spots where yeah. where we collect them. Well, that's no. That's why we're we're gonna do we're gonna do about 90 days up the coastline. And we're documenting it all and putting it up at the nuclearproctologist.org. And so we put up about a thousand pictures a day. That's underwater footage too. And we're just trying to ascertain what is going on here because the fact that we can't find the white sea anemones in they should populate the entire coastline, every single rock should be populated. This is something that's indelible into my mind from years of diving it. And I always said if you can make a nickel on each one of them, you'd be a, a multi billionaire. Well, you might not got, notice it, but I, I have been working here. Yeah, right here. Three hundred days a year yeah. in the water, Barkley Sound, at, in Barkley Sound for yeah. forty years, and the only major change that we've seen is what's happened in the last few years, which is, in fact, it really hit this year, which is sea star wasting disease. Well, wasting is not actually a disease. Yeah, Explained it on the path. They they got no proof. No, no, I got yeah, I do. got all the academics on it. No, you don't. Yes, I do. They, Who, they, who's who is the major researcher on this topic? Well, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but I actually have 25,000 pieces. And so I understand what's going it on. It is a disease. Well, they haven't admitted that it's a disease. They said it's a mystery disease, is what they call it. They haven't definitively named it. They try to blame it on a byproduct of algae and saying there, there was more, what is it called? A demonic or demoic? Demoic. demoic acid. And, of course, that's ludicrous when we only found about 12 species out of the 600 algae that belong in Desolation Sound in particular. So we're up here now looking. We haven't finished our expedition on this end. So there is a paper in review and right. which identifies the pathogen. From which institution, you mind my ask? Cornell. Cornell. How come not the because, local institutions? Well, the, you guys are here. I'm just curious. Just uh, because the people that have been working on it, they work out here on the coast, but their institution, well, it would be Cornell and Friday Harbor Labs, I guess, would be the two um, together. Yeah, because like you got to understand that I also the coastline and see just because it doesn't match up to you is what I see. I can't take that away from what I've seen that the white sea well, anemones were everywhere. What so. I'm telling you is we've got four right here. pairs of data here. Right. And we don't see any on rocks. But we don't see any major changes. Yeah, no, I think it was we right. do not see any major changes in the last forty years except for okay. what's happened for this, this disease. Starfish. 
the sea star. And it's word. only a few species. So the ochre sea star, uh, Pycnopodia, which I guess is the sun star, and uh, Evisterius, and I don't know what the common name of Evisterius is. These are all, um, and these ones are all specialists on bivalves. So Pateria and Evisterius and Leptisterius and so forth have not been affected. We haven't found them on the coastline. We found them out here, though, there's quite a few, but we didn't find them uh, from here, we didn't find them in Victoria, we didn't find them around Which ones? Salt, Triana. I put the pictures up on my site. Which and ones? the spots and the GPSs and the maps. Which um, ones? We, all we found was the purple. Which uh, is interesting because yeah, that's wherever one of we the went. ones that's affected here. And, the, right. and so, uh, we found the disaster most, is very few. has yeah. been wiped out, for instance, in Friday Harbor and most places. And we didn't find Santa anything, Rosa. I didn't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. We didn't find anything in the tide pools for 200 kilometers. Now that was Desolation Sound, Georgia Street, and we published all of that. Um, out here, we're, we're seeing the same thing, except there's, we're seeing about 12 base species, and, that's, and we're seeing more of those out here, but we're not seeing the extra species. And so we find that rather uh, perplexing, to say the least, and worrying, that this trend seems to be going right to the coastline of the same species. We're finding the kelp, so the weed. So why do you think it is that our researchers, which go out here year after year after right. year, are not seeing this? I mean, they've right. been working here yeah. for 40 no, years. Yeah, good question, man. I don't know. Because I got no idea. And, and they've got the data. The data are published. Um, people like Carlos You publish at five different institutions, yeah. Well, it's more than that. It's okay. five yeah. owners, but the researchers come from all over the world. Right, yeah. So about 70 institutions actually send Was researchers that right? here. Wow, that is fascinating. Okay, well that was just, what we're looking at is Fukushima is hemorrhaging to the ocean from three melted reactors. We've never had that on the planet before. And it takes 131 days at two miles an hour for it to cross the ocean. There's 1,440 plumes a day going in that ocean. These reactors were filled up with missiles left over in silos, so they're already, are already unstable. And then you put it through a chain reaction again. And the fuel pools are missing on three of the reactors. We've never seen this on our planet before. And we know that if you're looking at the damage to the ocean, you don't look at the tuna or the salmon or anything like that because they bioaccumulate. If you look at the filter feeders in the nursery of the ocean, that would be the ones that would show any disposition that come down from the fallout. Now, it takes three days by the jet streams, and it didn't stop hemorrhaging out till November, which was eight months. And even then, of course, they're using the homeless, they're in the destitute. Whereas in Chernobyl, they brought in 600,000 conscripted soldiers, and they've done 15 seconds up on the roof. And then he went home. But at Fukushima, they're using the homeless, and so they're not, like, the, the academics are not going in there and trying to solve it or deal with it. And we do 4,340 peer review academic studies every day in North America. And most of these are locked up beyond Ellsworth Springer and Wiley's paywalls, so we don't get access to it. And so they, they've created those three institutions, which almost 20,000 of the, the academic journals out there, have produced around 4,800 academic studies on Fukushima, and so the coastline didn't get receded. We identified 40 species, uh, and that's all in pictures, high quality pictures, and that's up on our site, and we go through that looking for other species. We probably found no more than 500 snails in 500 kilometers. We certainly never found that many limpets in 500 kilometers, and we're talking 500 about snails? In 500 kilometers. I could go to Scotts Bay and collect 500 snails yeah, you should be, able to do it on, should be able to do it on a rock. In 20 minutes. Right. I used to, have, when I was working underwater, they would be falling off the rock, and you feel bad because you're always knocking like 500 at a time off a rock. Chlorostoma is unbelievable. So Scotch Bay, I'll go check that out. And that's why I'm asking, basically, can you send me somewhere where there's life so I can show it to people so they don't, um, they don't, like, you know, people are worried, and we would prefer to be able to show them lots of life and show them a very healthy, happy environment and be able to put all this away and then move on with it. Because right now people are very concerned and we're determined to get out there. And if it's bad, it's bad, we'll show it. If it's good, we, we, that's what we want to show. We want to give people hope uh, because right now people are worried, in the academic community included, of course, because they're owned by the, the industry itself. Everybody has to be a lobbyist in order to get their jobs in that. And we understand that's how that works. Everybody understands that, of course. The big question was, I can't find the way sea anemones in all this coastline, but, but you're saying here it doesn't matter because you don't see it anyway, but the rest of the coastline does matter because we, we have it on we see pictures. Them on, we see them on every dock. Dock's got nothing to do with it though, see? It's different material. 
The, the, the buckyball is the hydrogen water. sulfur it's peroxide. Water. It's the same water. Yeah, no, it's not at all. The water's got nothing to do with it. It's where the foundation that it hangs on to got everything to do with it. So a rock is different than a, a wood. Wood will get slime, it'll get other things, whereas mm -hmm. a rock is the natural habitat they for these will, creatures. And they will hang off of chains off Yeah, of they will so. But you can go to all the ferry terminals, you won't find a single one on it. In that 500 kilometer stretch, and that you can take it to so the bank because I do that and I publish those pictures, and they're not there. And nobody can go down and take the picture and find them because we that's what we do in the hopes that we can have a debate. And I, I'm not going to take up any more of your time, it was just very intriguing. And so, Scott's Bay will check that out. And outside of that, I, I just needed to hear from you guys what you're finding, and that gives me hope. I can go look harder, all look further. All the way along the Mills Peninsula, out to well, we got three days here, we haven't seppings, found it. Seppings, uh, you know, we got a we got a Coast Guard grade uh, Zodiac. It's got Kevlar bottom on it. We got all the gear. We got everything possible you could ever want. So we're going to get this job done, and I hope you know, like you're saying, that everything is uh, healthy and normal throughout the entire coastline. Sounds like it is here. You know yeah. what you're telling me. I'll take your word for it. I mean, yeah. you've been here your whole life, uh, so to speak. You're the director. You should know if and nobody does, yeah. right? Yeah. Stay tuned because uh, they're going to publish that. Stuff. And I appreciate your time, sir. Have a very kind of you. Very, you're very generous, too. And we'll, like I said, best wishes to you and yours. We'll get out of your way. Yeah, I'll get out of your way here.